Hey everybody, Ann here, sitting here on my porch, having my coffee with all of you. And today, it's gonna be all about plantain. I'm going to show you an in-depth look at it up close and personal. I'm gonna tell you different medicinal properties and I'm gonna transplant some to hopefully get it to grow closer to where the tiny house is. And I think I'm gonna maybe dry some out. I don't know, maybe I'll do something else with it. Let's talk a little bit about what this plantain weed is and how do you use it. Once again, this is written by Rachel Link. She's a master's degree registered dietitian, so there's a little bit of credibility out there with her. Um, there's multiple other sources that say pretty much the same thing that this article says, so if you just Google the plant, you'll be able to find it, and there's plenty of information out there about it. Plantain weed grows everywhere, and I initially learned about it from Lena at Red Road Homestead, and it's not only edible, and I know it's edible because I've eaten it and it's delicious, but it's been used for centuries in traditional medicine. In fact, plantain weed contains plant compounds that may reduce inflammation, improve digestion, and promote wound healing, so that is a total bonus. It may decrease inflammation. Low levels of inflammation are part of our body's healthy response to injury, but chronic inflammation can lead to various illnesses. Studies show that plantain weed may help reduce inflammation. In particular, the leaves contain several anti-inflammatory compounds, including flavonoids, terpenoids, glycosides, and tannins. A rat study found that administering plantain weed extract decreased several markers of inflammation caused by liver injury. Another animal study observed similar findings reporting that plantain weed extract decreased inflammation and reduced liver enzymes to protect against liver damage. There's been some more testing about how it treats cancer, but all of this leads to really an amazing herb that you can just basically find out in your yard. It may promote wound healing. Some research notes that plantain weed may support wound healing by reducing inflammation, blocking microbial growth, and relieving pain. In fact, a study in 40 people found that applying a gel containing aloe vera and plantain weed helped heal foot ulcers. Similarly, in an animal study, aloe vera and plantain weed improved wound healing and enhanced tissue repair when applied topically. Several compounds in plantain weed seeds and leaves have been shown to alleviate certain digestive issues. In particular, the seeds contain psyllium, a type of fiber often used as a natural laxative since it absorbs water as it moves through your digestive tract. According to one review, plantain leaves may also slow the movement of your digestive tract, which may promote bowel regularity and help treat diarrhea. A rat study even found that narrow leaf plantain extract promoted the healing of stomach ulcers. Additionally, some animal studies suggest that plantain weed's anti-inflammatory properties may aid digestive issues like inflammatory bowel disease, which can cause symptoms like stomach pain, bloating, and diarrhea. How do you use them? Well, briefly, fresh leaves. If you're able to find plantain weeds in your yard, you can also enjoy the leaves in a variety of dishes. I know I have. After rinsing them, young leaves can be eaten raw or cooked because older leaves tend to be tougher. They may be better suited for cooked dishes such as soups, stews, and stir fries. For topical use, try drying the leaves and infusing them into your choice of oil such as coconut, sunflower, olive oil, or almond oil. Additionally, not stated here, but I know this is the truth because Lena from Red Road Homestead told me you can chew them up, put them in your mouth, chew them up, put them on a bug bite, and it takes the sting away. So let's see if I can dig some up. I will tell you, I know the soil around here is pretty, pretty rough, but I've got multiple different specimens to choose from. So I'm just going to try and dig some up and transplant them in the garden. I noticed right away really hard rocky soil. I had trouble digging, digging in multiple times. But I finally got me some samples out, so I'm gonna take them back to the area that I wanna plant them in and plop them down in some dirt. This is the area right by the tiny house outside. I think I'm gonna dig a hole right about here. Yeah, that looks like a good spot. 
There we go. And it's already got some rocks in it, so I will be incorporating that back into the soil. Got a nice little trench going there. Threw a few more rocks down in it from my driveway. <laughs> And just started plopping plants down. Yep, that one comes with a lot of other weeds, but there's some clover growing in there, and I want to try and keep that. And then I just filled in the spots with some dirt that came with it, some of the native dirt that included some of the rocks and whatnot with it. So hopefully they'll live. Yep, I have to water them. I watered them really, really well definitely lots and lots of water because I want these plants to be able to bounce back. I think I poured about a gallon all down on top of them. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's draining, but I think I added two gallons actually. But hopefully these plants will make it. I don't know if you remember, but I transplanted a bunch of wild lettuce down here and I've been picking off of it regularly and it is still growing. It's still giving out leaves and whatnot. Now this plant is a little bit different. We'll talk about that plant in another video. But if this made it, I think the plantain will make it too. This whole area, I would love to just plant a bunch of wild stuff in that grows natively. And I could have used that water <laughs> to water all these plants but I didn't, I just got it out of a rain barrel. So hopefully they will live. Check this out, what do you think that is? You think that's a cucumber? Cucumber or squash plant? I don't know how it got there, but it's there, funny. Now I'm gonna go harvest some actual leaves out in the wild. There's a good specimen. I'm gonna pick off several leaves got a little bit of clay splashed up onto it underneath so I will definitely wash that off. I'm going to leave the flowering tops and I will leave most of the plant behind because I want it to keep growing. There's some nice leaves in there. See that? I think that's enough to be left behind. I've got so much of this growing all over the place. I'm just gonna pick me a whole big mess of them. Now take a look at this plant. This is a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about that in another video, but that is another very important plant. Look at the size of those leaves. Oh, look at all that clover in the center. I almost wish I had transplanted this bunch, but this one has a lot of bigger, older leaves. These you definitely gotta cook. I had thought, mm, I could make like cabbage wraps with them. But in a second here, you're gonna see um, when you turn the leaf over, look at how big those are. The ribs on the back are actually pretty tough, so I don't know if I could actually make cabbage rolls with them. But I've got it growing everywhere, so I will always have an abundant supply. I found that drying herbs is easiest just by putting them outside on a dry paper towel and letting them sit out. So that's what I'm doing. And the rest of those, yep, you guessed it, going into dinner. The next day, this is what they look like. Some of them are dried pretty well. Some of them are not. This one, one of the bigger leaves, still needs to go a little bit. That one, too. That's a little crispy, so that's ready to go in a jar. Yeah, this one needs a few more days drying out. But I plan to dehydrate a lot more. Look at guys, they made it. They made it through the night. I will continue to water them every day and I will go in and snip out some of those other weeds that I don't want. I don't want to pull them out by the root just quite yet because I want the roots of the plantains to get established really well before I mess with it. But they made it. Hooray! Go me! <laughs> That's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video.
Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.